What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here. We're gonna be going over some motorcycle close calls in this video, and we're gonna be diagnosing what happened, how it happened, and what we can do ourselves to prevent any types of close calls or even motorcycle accidents. These are typical things that you find on the typical commute to work or when you're out riding about having fun. So let's go ahead and jump into this and let's diagnose some of these things. So let's go back just a little bit more and this is somebody entering an intersection and they start to accelerate out. Once you start accelerating out of something, whether it's a curve or intersection, be prepared for the next hazard. So we have a bunch of hazards um, over here onto the side. So we have pedestrians. We don't know if they're gonna jut out. We don't know any of that stuff. It's a very congested area. We even have vehicles here that quite possibly could do a U-turn in front of us. We don't know. We have no idea what their intentions are. Our job as motorcyclists is to be prepared for each and every one of those. So when you exit out at a hazard zone already, which is the intersection, we're already entering into another one. So let's just maintain our speed. Let's not do a high throttle or anything crazy. So what you see right here is he's gonna increase his throttle quite a bit. Okay, so we accelerated pretty fast, which is fine. You want to accelerate out of the hazard zone, but that's only when you're going towards a uh, non-hazard zone. So we're right here we have uh, kind of a, a trap. So we have another vehicle that could possibly back out. We don't know. We have congestion to the left, so this red vehicle is sitting right here waiting to go left. Uh, when I see a situation like this, I know there's a lot of impatient drivers, so this red car could quite possibly say, screw this, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to turn left, I'm going to go to the next one. So right now they're off to the side, but without even checking, some drivers will just gun it and get into this main lane, which will be a hazard for yourself. We also have a hazard of uh, this van right here. Now this van could easily turn left, which is what we're going to see pre uh, starting this up right now or he could just back out or it could just go straight and now cut off your future uh, right hand escape path so let's go ahead and watch this part okay so the indication was there uh, it's really hard to see probably on your screen on my screen I could definitely see it the indication was there prior to him actually turning so now we have a vehicle that's going to do a U-turn in the middle of the road. There's nothing you can do. There's no escape path to the left. Your only real escape path is to slow down and utilize this version of escape path. Your stopping distance, the distance between you and the vehicle, is an escape path if you can stop in time. If you cannot stop in time, the other escape path you could possibly do is possibly slow down, use up this portion of this escape path, the stopping distance, release the brakes and swerve and go onto the sidewalk and then reapply the brakes if it is absolutely 100% needed. You notice how it's utilizing the whole road. You, there's nothing you could really do other than maybe get this gap right here. He slowed down just enough to where he was able to allow this vehicle to get out of his path of travel and he was able to maintain his own lane. So there was no evasive maneuvers in this situation. It was just him slowing down. So yes, he did accelerate to uh, the next hazard out of that intersection, but he had the skill enough to uh, release the throttle and then apply the brakes without turning the handlebars and panicking. Uh, the one thing that will get people in this situation when they come up to here is that they will panic. They will see the uh, vehicle moving out in front of them, try to turn, panic, panic, panic. What you do is roll off the throttle, reach for that front brake, start applying a little bit of front brake, and that vehicle should get out of its way. Okay, so what happened here was a lack of communication. Uh, it says right here, riders almost collide. Uh, these riders are, uh, the person in front knows he needs to get gas, okay? And the, the rider behind at the very end is probably just sitting back and just relaxing. There's no rush to get anywhere. The only person that is really directing and leading is the one in the front. The person in the back, go ahead and relax. Just get there when you get there. Usually the people in the middle st tend to uh, have no understanding of where things are going because there's usually no indication, there's no signs, there's no uh, Bluetooth systems or anything like that. And when we see this right here, accelerating out of a turn, let's accelerate on the straightaway, it's wide open, this is great. But the intention of the rider in front was probably to do that, but he knew ahead of time to slow down because he wants to get into the Shell gas station. Uh, since the, that rider knew what he wanted to do, he was able to roll off the throttle um, at his pace, 
apply the brakes at his pace. But that is really that whole situation of somebody up front hits the brake lights, the person behind them hits the brake lights, the person in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, until you know it, uh, the ones that do finally hit the brakes is not going to stop in time because they don't have that reaction time like the first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth people. So right here in this situation, the person in front has the perfect reaction time, perfect braking, perfect everything. The person behind him doesn't know what's going on, now has diminished reaction time, diminished braking, and diminished turning. The person behind him has even more diminished and even more diminished. So it gets to the point where it really only needs two to three people stacked up to where that third person now has no reaction time and barely any braking distance. And that happens right here where he starts to go forward, the other person wants to turn, they recognize it, and they just kind of slide. Very nice. So before we jump into the next one, I just want to say thank you so much to my YouTube members and Patreon members. My last video got completely demonetized, and with that, that views actually dropped 90%. So these videos aren't going to do very well, but you guys are the ones that are making it possible. So if you like this, if you like this video format, please, please, please either think about joining YouTube membership or Patreon, or if you don't have any money or anything like that so that you can't prop up the ad revenue that is lost, share this video. Share it. Share the other one, share your favorite video, the one that I helped you out the most, and maybe somebody else can use that. That is one of the best ways, if not the best way, to support this channel. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into this. Okay, probably too fast, going through the turn. Whoa, 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 yep. What are you doing, lady? What are you doing, lady? Okay, so around the blind turn, this is one of those things that I always talk about when it comes to any type of mountain riding or even riding here where it's it's not super you know jutted out or anything like that. There's not a lot of blind curves, but you're going to find blind curves in the city with uh, buildings blocking the way, shrubbery um, out here in the mountains, out here in this beautiful country. You're going to find uh, uh, blind curves. Okay, so you're going to go around this turn right here. And if this is your vision, if you're just looking straight, not looking through your uh, turn, you're not going to see all this stuff. You're literally looking right here where the cursor is. Now, right over here, I always talk about, you know, there's possible uh, hazards. There's somebody stopped. There's an animal, whatever it is. It just so happens in this video, that's what happens. So this is one of those concerns that you should have when you're out mountain riding. Or any blind turn to be to be completely 100% honest. Honest. So right here, we can assume maybe the car driver's like, oh well, you know, he's kind of blocking traffic for me. I gotta go. He's gonna stay there, so I'm just gonna jut it. So I know a lot of people would be like, I got a bike. Boom, I'm gonna go. What I like about this rider is that he actually uh, slows down, even comes to a stop, allows this person to get out of the road, and then leave. I said in the last video that I'm not the type of person that wants to, uh, you know, jump like going right here and then like start cussing somebody out. Because now we got people on the road. And it's not just my safety. I'm really worried about this person getting T-boned around in the other blind corner. Yes, they made a dumb move, but it's not my judgment call whether or not they should get T-boned and, and all that stuff. So I'm going to slow down, let them get out of there so I can get out of there too. All right, I'm not here to judge anybody's um, whether they should be doing that or not. I don't think that's legal at all, um, unless he was making a left-handed turn probably at the front. So I'm um, unsure of what was going on here when it came to that. Okay, so we're going to scroll back uh, possibly about four or five seconds. So what I said about the, the legality of going in the turn lane and just continuing to go all the way, um, I don't know where it is. It's, it might be uh, their local policy that you could definitely do that. Um, this is one of those hazards where if, if you can, yeah, you can do it possibly, but um, should you do it? So let's, I don't know what state plate is. If you can read that state plate, everybody go ahead and write it in the chat. It'd be good to know. So anyway, so he's going to go down this path right here. It's going at a relatively slow speed. You can actually see it right here, 27 miles per hour. Not a big deal. Okay, in the last video I talked about, you know, hazard, hazard, hazard. Once you pass the hazard and you get to the next one, and then we have a new hazard. So you uh, uh, broke the achievement, you did your job, now you got another obstacle in the path. 
So big hazard right here. We got a big hazard. There's no escape paths whatsoever. What happens if another vehicle decided I'm going to turn left and I'm going to pause right here? So this is that hazard that you have when you're starting to do this. That's why you go at a slow speed. So I like the fact that he's going 26 miles per hour. Okay, so this gap right here coming up, let's go back. So I'm gonna, I want you guys to see the gap that comes up right in front of the tractor trailer. Um, that to me, it, it just made me a little nervous because that's a big enough gap for a car to come through. So that's what we're gonna watch right here. Watch how big of a gap that is. That to me, it just feels like a car could have came through. Um, one thing that you can do when you're out riding and you're doing something like this is yes, we have, uh, you wanna double check uh, the tires and everything. Yes, we have that. But um, for the instance in this situation where that car wanted to come out, um, one thing you could definitely do, and this is what I do um, when I'm driving and when I want to find a parking spot. This helps me find parking spots. So little tips and tricks here is look at the shadow. So time of day, if the sun's over here, there's a shadow, a shadow. See how you can see the shadow right above this red truck, but you can't see what's in front of the red truck. So that is your little tip and trick right there is the shadow will go ahead and jut itself even more. And I do that for parking. So if this was parking, the sun was shining that way. I see shadow, 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 no shadow. Perfect. It's an open spot. So if you see an open spot here, it's shadow, 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 no shadow, no shadow, shadow. That means there's a big gap there and there quite possibly could be somebody coming through. So let's watch this part again. So shadow, shadow. You didn't see this person. So shadow, no shadow. There's no shadow, but now shadow again, no shadow again, no shadow. See this big gap right in front of here? So a lot of shadow, nothing here. There's a shadow for this car, shadow for this car. There's no shadow. That is another clue that you can use. No shadow. There's a big enough gap that there's no shadow, that there's probably an intersection or somebody creeping in. So that's the situation, and that's that's what it can help you is by looking at those shadows. So now while, while we did this, let's look at the shadow, and I want you to kind of figure out, man, there's something going there. I know you probably have already seen, well, I'm saying that like it's a live stream. I know that you're watching this right now. So now we're going to rewatch this this portion again, and with you guys, I want you to check the shadow portion and kind of figure out for yourself. I know you already know what's coming up, but it's very good to start using that skill. All right, so let's go ahead and watch this one real quick. Line of sight is another problem in this, okay? So we're gonna go to that front part. Following distance and line of sight is a big issue on this one. Okay, so following distance, uh, a little close, but that's perfectly fine in this situation because he does have a really good view around the vehicle. So what he's doing, he's actually towards the center of the whole street uh, within his lane, and that way he can see down here. So line of sight for him is actually relatively good to where he can see in front of the vehicle. But if, like we just saw, we're not going to see, uh, or there's no line of sight, I'm sorry, there's no line of sight for anybody coming out of this area to see him. So he's not presenting himself very well. And yes, being right here is, is a really good spot so you can see around, but do you need to be this close to be right here? You don't. So what you can do is actually spread out and increase your following distance, still be in this position so you can look down. But since you're such a far distance away from this vehicle, it's actually to, uh, to the point where this vehicle is not creating a blind spot or a line of sight issue for the other vehicles coming out. And we'll talk about that right here. Okay, so we have the orange vehicle way up here. The orange vehicle probably can maybe see this vehicle, uh, see the motorcyclist right here. But what you can do is actually increase your following distance. Let's say um, this car right here is way up here. So yeah, the vehicle's uh, blocking your view. You know, this vehicle's blocking your view because he's about to turn in. But you're such a far distance away that this orange vehicle knows that you're there because he can see. He can see around this vehicle because remember, the further something gets out, the smaller it really looks. You know. And, but you can see all this other stuff. So if you put your hands right here in front of your face, you can't see a lot of things. But if you put your hand right here, you can see a lot more. Does that make sense? That's kind of the aspect here. So this is your hand. This vehicle is your hand. Push it out. 
push it out so you can see around them. Don't get so close to where you're blocking your, your vision. Remember, my hand's the same size. The lane is the same size. All we're doing is changing distance away. That's the probably the best way I could describe it. So a lot of these close calls and a lot of this agitation would not have been there, uh, you know, indicate, oh, while wow, you're indicating here and then getting pissed off at this guy coming out is if he slowed down. And if that guy indicated the last second, you're, you have such a following distance, large following distance that it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all. You're just, these guys going to turn and you're be like, uh, whatever. Therefore, you don't have agitation on your ride. I think that's very important. Roundabouts are considered intersections, everybody. Oh. Um, so this is, yes, this is a roundabout. Let's go ahead and go back, sorry. Uh, roundabouts are intersections. Uh, we learned on the live stream. So if you haven't seen any of my live streaming is what we do is we do this actually live. You, I bring you guys into the chat. We learn a lot from each other. I learn from your experiences. You learn from the my experiences. Then we learn together on the video itself. So if you would like to make sure you hit that notification bell button. If you've already subscribed, if not, click that subscribe button and then hit that notification bell button. That way you're notified when I go live and I go live four days a week. So pretty cool. Anyways, these are uh, intersections and what, what got me into that part was that we learned how intersections uh, work basically all over the world on these live streams. And if you're on the outside, uh, you have to indicate if you're going uh, left and you have to indicate if you're going right. So obviously uh, this guy didn't do anything. He just changed his mind from going out that way and he decided to continue on going. And that is not what he was supposed to do. So he's going this way. He has not indicated nothing until the going to the left. He just makes a sharp turn, and he goes left in front of the motorcyclist. Okay. So when he goes left in front of the motorcyclist, I want you to see the reaction of the motorcyclist. Right? That's how it's said. <laughs> uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to look how the camera angle shifts from a lean to going up like this. And what happened there is that, yes, he said something vocally. He saw it as soon as it happened. What he did is he straightened up the motorcycle and applied the brakes just a little bit to allow that vehicle to go in front of him. That was a very good maneuver. A lot of people would panic in this situation. It was in their middle, middle of the turn. Somebody's about to cut him off. Grab a fistful of front brake while the handlebars are turned, which will cause you to dump the bike. So straighten up and then apply the brakes. You don't even have to stop. You just have to slow down just enough for that vehicle to get out, out away from you. There you go. See how it's straightened up now? And I, you can use a lot of buildings as a template. So if we go back just a little bit, look how sharp that building was. So look how sharp that building was. See how it's it's cut off? So he's at a lean angle because the, the GoPro is attached to his bike. So it's at a lean angle. And then watch the lean angle of this right here on the top left. Watch the lean angle of that start to straighten up and become perpendicular to the horizon. See that? See how it did that? I, I like his reaction. is very good, and he was able to maintain his bike um, on two wheels. Same person. Same person. Blind. Ooh, he saw it. He saw it. Very good. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that, was kind of, that was kind of funny. Um, if you'd notice, I've been messing up a lot of my words and everything. Uh, I'm doing it one full, uh, see, look at it right there, one full video, just like I do my live streams here. So this is kind of what you get during the live streams. So right here, we've got 30, uh, possibly kilometers per hour, maybe, I don't, whatever it is, 30 kilometers, miles per hour. Anyway, it's supposed to be slow. Okay, that's relatively slow. One thing I like right here is what he sees, uh, he has his turn. But this hedge right here is kind of blocking his own lanes. But what he's doing is he's keeping his little cone of, of uh, focus um, on this area. But he's using his peripheral. So in the peripheral, which is all around here, what he's seeing is no movement. Okay, In the animal kingdom and everything, uh, any type of movement will create a, like, what's that? Okay, If everything's still, like camouflage, how camouflage works, you know, if you're still, um, 
you won't be able to see it. So we have a red card jut out, and that happened in his peripheral. And what he did is he took his cone of focus, which is right here. So cone of focus out of his peripheral, sees this in his peripheral, looks real quick, applies an action, search, evaluate, execute in the middle of his turn. That's very good. So he was able to straighten up, slow down, just like in the previous video. Um, one thing I do, uh, or one thing that gives me a little bit of caution here is that I don't know if any of these vehicles are getting out. And if they start backing out, I'm going pr relatively high speed. I don't want to get hit. This car driver, sure, why not? Uh, what I would do is I was, I'd kind of move over a little bit more to the right. It'll open my view up to any incoming, uh, or not incoming, but any vehicles backing out because you can tell by the running lights will be on. These running lights are not on, not on, not on great they're not on but if i see running lights on and then i see that uh that light the incandescent light or led light for backing up uh activated then i need to be a little bit more cautious and i want to see that as far as i can uh so i would be scooting over here this vehicle decides to go crazy and drive like like a maniac um if i if you guys ever see that if i ever see that you know i've seen it a few times but if you ever see that let them go just let them go they don't get in front of them Okay, and try to keep like a like a huge following distance away from them. Okay. So this is very yay yay yay. So, so this is a very, uh, sorry, very hectic area, and we have plenty of hazards out on the road. So I saw some water on the other side of the street. Um, this guy decided to pass uh, this vehicle right here. Um, I don't know if, if these people know each other, but it's kind of not the smart thing, and it's not very proper biker etiquette just to pass them and, and, and do that. Just kind of wait um, until you get out on the main road and pass them like it's their own lane because you don't know them. But... We also don't have a very good line of sight of anybody turning left in front of us. That is a big issue here, and that's what almost causes his first wreck. So this person can see the whole uh, intersection right here. Uh, the person that is filming cannot see the whole intersection. So he did not see this person. Um, this red vehicle, uh, red motorcycle that's right above my head, probably saw it, and it was not going to gun it, but the guy that is filming just gunned it. And he put himself in that situation, needs to slow down, entering intersections before he can see the full thing. We also have another uh, intersection that has cones, so there's a lot of construction, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of everything when it comes here. So understand that since there's a lot of confusion for other motorists, they might make bad decisions. Uh, so this uh, decision to pull out right here, probably couldn't see anything um, over here because there's this big gate right here, or it's probably the bridge. And they didn't open up the view. They didn't stop and slowly creep out and open up the view like I previously talked about. They just went for it. And that is bad for, as a motorcyclist. That is bad as a car driver. That is bad as a person on the road operating any vehicle. So it's the human being that are making mistakes, whether it's the car driver or the motorcyclist. So stop blaming cagers. Okay, guys? Yeah. We also have a wet road uh, right here. Look up. Oh, good job. Good job. Okay. So this is how quick it can happen, everybody. This is how quick it can happen. So we got lane filtering happening here. It looks like everyone is doing their job and they're not, you know, hassling the motorcyclist and they're giving the motorcyclist plenty of room. So good job on everybody here cooperating in traffic. But this is what I was talking about whenever it comes to anybody rubbernecking. What rubbernecking is, is literally like something interesting happens on the side of the road. More than likely, it's a car accident. People will start driving. They're still driving straight. They're going to look, 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 look. And their neck, it just like, it turns the rubber. You know, they just do the full exorcism thing. 
Um, that's what it's called, rubbernecking, um, or it's probably called something else anywhere else, but that's what I call it. And this is what happens here. It's just real quick, something caught his attention. It doesn't have to be a motorcycle accident, car accident, or anything like that. And this video is going to get demonetized because I keep saying that. Um, it could be anything interesting. You know, it, it could be just like a kid, you know, wearing all pink and bouncing, you know, a bouncy ball or, you know, anything. I, you're imagining it now. But something caught his attention, but nothing else you know it's your space time everything is still moving you got to watch out what's in front of you and that's what happens here and he recognized he evaluated and he executed in perfect fashion but if he was just paying attention he would never have to use his uh his skills so guys if you are in a position to where you don't have the skills yet let's start building upon our hazard perception uh, alongside with our skills so we have two really good uh skill sets that will keep us alive here Okay, it's great that you are probably an expert at swerving um, or even emergency braking, but are you an expert at actually finding the hazard yet? If not, let's keep going. That was very good. That was very good. And that is why you need to learn both hazard perception and then you need to go practice your skill set out in the parking lot. And if you want to learn how to do that, I have a really good uh, website, ddfmcrew.com, has a bunch of parking lot exercises and a bunch of other cool things. So check that out. Nah, don't do that. No, uh, let's not do that. Oh, there's more. Okay. We're going to talk about this one. This, I, mean, I keep saying that. All right. So the common denominator on this one is him. He's the problem in this in these instances. And this is what happens when you find out if you're a good writer or a bad writer. If you're a good writer, you very rarely have close calls. The only time you have close calls are on those freak accidents or those freak things that happen like a meteor or a deer running across. I mean, there's not much you can do in that situation. Nobody has superhuman reflexes. But the thing that we do have control in um, is our speed and where we put ourselves in space time. I keep saying that, but I want you guys to understand riding a motorcycle is not just riding a motorcycle. You are maneuvering on a one plane of existence, which is the road. And you need to understand where you're sp where you are in space and time. You know, if you're going fast, you're going to close up some distances there. You need to know where you are in terms of the lane so you know how to evade. Think of Frogger in that aspect. But what we're doing here is that uh, we're diagnosing why this guy is not a good driver. And this guy is not a good driver because he's putting himself into these situations by having a high rate of speed and then being angry about it. So when we watch this first one, Okay, so we have an issue right here. So you see there's a little bit of smoke. We have an issue right here. So something happened to where this person or this person had to apply the brakes really hard. Okay, so it's not this driver's fault that he's going in front of a motorcyclist. He's doing evasive maneuvers to get away from this other car. So as a good driver, he's protecting himself and his family, and he got into a spot where there's nobody else. Now it's people behind him, and now it's their responsibility to react and do any type of evasive maneuvers. So to get pissed off at this guy, I'm really upset by that. That's really dumb. Don't ever do this kind of crap, guys. Don't punch mirrors. Don't be idiots. Um, in this situation, uh, it would have been a lot easier for the motorcyclist not to panic because panic will lead to anger, and then your adrenaline is pumped, and now you start doing some crazy things. He could be a more calm driver if he just slowed down and went the speed limit with everybody or reacted sooner. So practice your reaction skills, practice your hazard perception. So what, when I saw this, I saw the smoke light up before I saw any type of evasive maneuver. So once you see smoke flying up in front of you, uh, it's time to slow down. So the smoke, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, at this point, you don't have a lot of room. Okay, this is, but that's the cool thing about escape paths is you don't need a lot of room. So this is about how much room you need. But let's not hang out here. There's no escape path to the left, no escape path to the right. The only escape path you have is in front of you and behind you. Space time right there. How do you get yourself behind you as quick as possible? Apply the brakes in a straight line. How do you get yourself in front as quick as possible? Accelerate. How do you get from side to side? Turning. That's what we have here. Turning, left, right, acceleration, deceleration. Let's use those. In this situation, he accelerates out of here, but until not until he gives this person a peace of mind and slaps his mirror. Don't do that. 
Get out of there. Go, 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 go. Once again, he's speeding, puts himself in a uh, situation to where he can get cut off. He has to start applying brakes, swerving, all these other things. He's a, he is accelerating way too fast for this situation. And this car, like I said, cannot judge. In, like I said in the last video, this car, car cannot judge your, uh, your place in space and time be based on how your size is so if you have you all we have is a headlight two tires which are in line so it looks like one tire one headlight looks like a person running really fast i can't tell where they are i don't know how fast they're going to get here that's the situation we're having especially when you start increasing your speed this guy's going way too fast and he's a small target so all these situations are happening because of speeding speeding I'd watch out for animals in this situation oh that's one dumb animal right there wow so this uh, vehicle yeah let's get out of it let's go all right so we have a solid yellow, a solid yellow right here. That means no passing. You can pass if you're on if you're on this side. You can pass going that way. Uh, this lane cannot pass. This lane can pass. Anyways, this truck guns it. This is extremely dangerous, uh, extremely dangerous. And I think we understand why this guy was slowing down to turn left. The truck passed on the left. That is that's terrible. And this happens a lot though for motorcyclists. Motorcyclists will pass on the left and they'll pass a vehicle up here and they'll turn left in front of them. This is where it gets dangerous too. Another thing that can happen is somebody turning right. So they're turning right. Let's pretend this is a part of the intersection off to the right where the trees are. There's cars turning right. There's a lot of motorcyclists that lane split on the right side and then get hit or they hit the vehicle. Uh, really start paying attention to that kind of stuff. But right here, this is definitely a close call. Check your mirrors, do a head check before even turning left. Um, even on a single lane road, you never, ever, ever know. And it caused him to go late. He started chugging. It starts expanding. If you start getting nervous, just just go ahead and you're cut the sh uh, trip short. Can somebody explain to me these roads? Can somebody explain to me those roads? There was a road just like this in the last video, and I was, I thought to myself, this road is just way too narrow for anything. So how do these roads work if you are in that area and you have something like this? Uh, we weren't taught this because we don't have them. Um, to me, it looks like it's a single lane and then you have two shoulders. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, I don't know what the, the point of that is. But we got a truck going. This is also a blind turn. So let's, we can pretend that this is a motorcyclist or we can continue pretending this is a truck. Either way, it's a blind turn. You don't know what's going around it. So hesitation, uh, making sure that you're not... Uh, just going going around as fast as possible so you have lack of uh, uh, reaction time. Um, also with the motorcyclist too on coming out the other way. Slow down, relax, let's uh, figure it out. He did really good with his evasive maneuvers and went around. But everyone evaded and they didn't want to hit. Look. That happens. Okay, a lot of that, that happens a lot, guys. This happens a lot. Um, this vehicle judged this person's distance was, or felt like he could judge that distance and decided to start creeping out so he can get in right behind him. Happens a lot. You'd probably do it as a car driver. You'd probably do it as a motorcyclist. It's merging. This dude's merging. But it freaks out this person that is riding. <clears throat> it freaks him out. And then uh, there's going to be a, some type of panic maneuver. Uh, thankfully, this guy did not just slam the brakes because that's usually what happens. Somebody panics. But what he did do is he looked at the motorist and then wasn't looking where he was going for a couple dozen feet. Okay. Look, 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 look. Okay, lane filtering out in California. Be very careful. Careful these big vehicles. S 
Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, so high rate of speed on these lane filtering. Um, California is not legal or illegal. Those from California, let me know if this is standard practice or not. We don't have it in Arizona. Um, but for me personally, I wouldn't be doing this at this high rate of speed. I'd be going uh, slightly higher, maybe 10 maybe 10 over what they're doing. Uh, this seems like they're doing a lot faster. And you remember, you have to variate your speed. To variate, very, very, whatever, vary your speed. And uh, I'm tired. I just, got, I just wrote up Mount Lemon with the DDFM crew. But vary your speed, vary your speed, um, and kind of judge. You know, slow down if you start seeing a hazard, speed up when there's no hazard. Slow down when you see a hazard, speed up. When I watch this video, there's no slowing down, there's no speeding up. It is one maintained, almost cruise control style thing, and there's hazards coming up, and there's nobody, nobody slowing down here. Okay, so let's slow down when we start seeing hazards, and I see a bunch of hazards. All those close calls are definitely hazards. So right here, how close he is to the line. Slow down with this other motorist. Slow down. Didn't slow down. Just honk the horn. Okay, slow down. Slow down. Or actually give yourself better space. I just don't understand that. Okay, roundabout. So that was uh, another roundabout uh, situation. It looks like this driver started creeping up over into this guy's lane. Rev bombing, do not do that. You are basically, what you're doing is you're pulling in the clutch and then activating the throttle. That's not good. Because what is it doing? Pulling the clutch removes power to the rear wheel, and now you're putting your engine RPMs really high. So just in case you accidentally dump the clutch, now your engine RPMs are really high. Good chance of doing a wheelie if you're on a sport bike. okay? Or you're going to lose control of your bike if anything so what you need to do is not do that maybe put in friction zone maybe get out of the way but uh, do not get rid of your two of your uh, primary controls which is the clutch and the throttle uh, either apply the brakes get out of the way slow down whatever you need to do speed up just don't do that it doesn't do anything Yeah, that's a, it's a pretty scary situation right there. It happens a lot on mountain roads, but I think in this situation, this person probably shouldn't be even having a, a semi-tractor trailer truck or whatever it is. So the tractor trailer does come around this bend, and this is one of those things that you need to watch out for because obviously they cannot contort like smaller vehicles just lined up. It's one long trailer, so it, it can creep out, and he has to actually go wide on a lot of these turns, but I don't think he's even allowed to be on here if I... Um, I think I know what video this came from. This might be the dragon, uh, tail of the dragon, I'm sorry. Tail of the dragon, somebody else can uh, probably tell me about that. But I know for a fact uh, for that road on tail of the dragon, no tractor trailer or trucks supposed to be on there. A little bit wide on turns. That's why being in a good position uh, before the turn, during the turn, and after the turn is very important. I personally like middle, 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 but that's just me. All right. Watch out, watch out. People turning right, people turning right. Oh, or opening doors. Yep. All right, bad camera angle. Can't really do too much here. People coming into your lane. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look up. Yep. Yep. So this was a high rate of speed. You can't see much because the camera angle is low. 
can't see much because camera angle is low, but uh, if you look up here, you'll see a vehicle uh, start to come over and then merge into his lane and then slow down. And this guy never once slowed down at all. He's already uh, speeding and he never slowed down. And then when he did pass this person, this is that mentality that I don't, I just can't stand is that let's get mad at these motorists, but then, then while we're getting mad, are staring at them getting pissed what about the hazards in front of us guys let's start thinking that way so this guy's going way too fast and let's get to the part where you see the person okay. so right here it's a little blurry let me see if i go back one or two frames it's a little blurry so what i saw was a black shape cut across two headlights that means somebody just crossed in front of the oncoming traffic so I know that that person's in my lane now. So I know on the camera you can't see it, but if you don't, if your your vision's slightly blurry or you can't, you're not wearing your glasses and your helmet or anything. If you just, that's another subtle cue, just like the shadow, is if you see a car move in front of two headlights, something just crossed in front of oncoming traffic. So I use that clue, and then I use my visual acuity. I can actually see very well, and I can actually see the vehicle coming. So at this point, I'm going to slow down because I know for a fact this guy needs to start to accelerate. So some cars, most cars, most people don't have really fancy and powerful cars. What they do is they're going to turn into your lane at 15 miles per hour and take a couple seconds to get up to speed. So what happens. So now for me as a motorcyclist this far back, I'm going to slow down my approach speed and then slowly gain um, uh, and pace them up in front of me. That's what I would do. So I'm slowing down already right here, which would have prevented the next situation this guy's running into. So we got brake lights. We have a plenty of distance here to slow down and possibly stop and stop behind this vehicle. But what happens? So while we're looking at this vehicle getting pissed, passing him, not knowing if he was turning left or doing anything, why did he stop? We don't know. Could be a pedestrian. So now we just hit a pedestrian. Now we just uh, T-bone this vehicle because he's turning left. But anybody see the other vehicle? Anybody see the other vehicle? This vehicle is wanting to pull out. We have no idea if he's doing it because our view is this now. That's our view now. We don't know what the other vehicle is doing. Maybe that's why this guy stopped. And now we just plowed into that white van because we're not paying attention. That's why you guys need to start calm, calming down and preventing the situation in the first place because this is a natural human reaction. This is just natural. You have to train yourself not to rea react like this. And I don't know you. I don't want to put myself in such a situation every single time to practice my reactions. I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prevent the situations in the first place. Another hazard of lane filtering. Remember shadows. Look at the shadows. Look at the shadows. Oh, that was a tap. So the shadows would have helped us with anybody coming out, but just like in uh, yesterday or last video, not yesterday's video, is that also watch the tires. See how they're all straight? They're straight going that way. As soon as you see a tire rotate, that should be a clue that something's about to happen. That person's starting to turn. Because not a lot of people just, ex like if they're stuck right here, they're not going to accelerate and then turn. They're going to turn those, turn that wheel over, look, and then go. That's what's going to happen. But I like to look at the shadows too. But you see how there's a shadow. So it doesn't look like anybody's going to go here because it's moving. Good shadow, good shadow, good shadow, good shadow, good shadow. We have good shadows all the way. So I can see this visually. Now I can also see what's up close, which are the tires turning. There it is. We'll go over that one more time for you guys. So watch this car. So now that we know which car it is, watch this car and watch its tire. See how it's straight? There it is. It takes practice. You'll see it way ahead of time. Hey, no. See, so that's a panic move. That was a panic. Okay. 
So let's go back just real quick. So you start to see the motor or the motorist cyclist, the uh, the car. Okay, the car is moving in a straight line, but you see how to, at an angle real quick. If he starts creeping towards this line, so if these tires start creeping towards the middle of the line, that means they are moving over. That's moving over. The moment you recognize that, the best thing you can do is just roll off the throttle. Too fast, way too fast, too fast, too fast. Yep. So he went and accelerated really fast into this situation. So he's going at a decent speed right here, and then he accelerates past all these people, and he accelerates into the turn. Remember, slow look, press, and roll. So slow down before the turn, look where you want to go, press to counter steer, do a little bit of body positioning, and then roll on the throttle when you exit the, uh, the turn. He did the opposite. He, he sped up into the turn and then pressed and then looked and then slowed down. So did it backwards. Um, don't do it that way. So he's going to normal speed and then he speeds up. That could have been a lot worse. So I wait till it's clear to then indicate left. Can't say the same for the cops. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. So he waits for it to be clear. So he's in a bad spot actually already. So he's not. He's in a bad line of sight for the cops. Be more off to the left if you can. Okay. All right. All right. So he's waiting. He's waiting. How much more are we waiting for? All right. So we should be good pretty soon. So they had the same uh, same thoughts. Same thoughts. The reason why you decided to go, he also decided to go. Blind turn. Blind turn. All right, so we're going to go back to that one. So this is also another line of sight we just saw. So if we can scroll back just a little bit. So while we're in here, okay, we're about to enter our turn. It's also a blind turn. Okay, these gates will, will cause issues. We have a vehicle leaving. So this is more like a junction. It looks like an interstate getting off the interstate, moving over to a junction. He's getting over the bridge, probably going to go to the other side. Here we go. Okay, we just recognized uh, a vehicle coming out. Okay, we just recognized the vehicle coming out in this right here. So we know that there's oncoming traffic in this part. So we need to start uh, going normal speed, but then slowing down, getting ready for that hazard that might pop out. Line of sight's also a problem. See how you can't see anything? That means they can't see anything either. Once again, I'd be off more towards the middle of the road if I possibly can, so that way I can uh, present myself a little bit better for them. You saw that already, okay? So you can see the vehicle go through the fence. It didn't go through. You can see the vehicle through the fence, not go through it. Um, you can see them right here. So there's at no point there's any slowing down. So you see the 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 path of travel for that vehicle to continue going at that speed. They didn't you know, stop and then slowly go, or they're not slowly going down to a stop. They're continuing their speed. And since they're continuing their speed, you know they're not gonna stop, so you need to slow down and possibly let them go ahead of you. Because at the end of the day, it's not about who's at right, who's at fault, who's whatever, whatever, whatever. If I T-bone them, I don't wanna live with that. Okay, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give right away to a lot of people when they shouldn't have right away. And this is one of those situations where I start to see him already doing it. My, my reaction is not going to dictate what he's going to do, not all the time anyways. So I'm going to control what I can do when it comes to that situation, which is the slow down. Wait, that was it? That happens all the time, guys. He's already traveling at a slower rate of speed, but here's the thing that um, 
that you guys have to realize. Yes, we're a motorcyclist. So we can go around these speed bumps like it's nothing. Like we can literally go around the speed bumps. Cars can't do that. Okay, here's the speed bump, speed hump, whatever you want to call it. Cars are going to go over that. We can go around it. So, yeah. Wait. All right, let's do this. Okay. All right. That happens all the time, guys. Happens all the time. So going up here, you see the white van traveling. Now, yes, uh, he probably shouldn't have went, but there's plenty of time for him to go. And there's plenty of a space cushion. There was no slowing down involved. And he had enough room. So, I mean, I just, I don't know. It, to this situation, if you really want to, slow down, relax. Um, but at no point should this been a, a, a reaction. I think a lot of this reaction stuff is that, yes, we don't have a full cage around us. So we feel more vulnerable. And when people feel vulnerable, they act out. Um, so motorcycles, are, I feel like, are already in a position of uh, acting out. Like it's just, it's such a high stress movement and or movement moment uh, when you're riding because you can see the road and a car kind of comes out. It's, everything just seems closer. It's a threat. It's a threat. We have that, na that basic instinct of fight, fight, fight. And that's why I think you see a lot of people getting angry and flip people off, punching things, but you have to remember, you know, let's slow it down, let's relax, we're in control of all that. High rate of speed, high rate of speed. Oh, oh, boy. Look where you're going. Look where you're going. Look where you're going. Yeah, that was uh, a very high-speed swerve, very high-speed swerve. Now, large trucks like that need a lot of room to make right-handed turns like that. So if you see a car starting to, or a truck going wide, like a big tractor trailer or even one of those freaking things, uh, going wide before a right-handed turn, do not try to cut that little gap in between the curb and the truck. He went wide for a reason and needs that. It even says there's stickers on the on the back of trailers that say that. So he did not heed to that warning at all. Watch out. Look where you're going, dude. So some people can creep into your lane. That like I said, it's 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 a scary feeling to be that close to to something that could hurt you so bad. Um, this situation, he wanted to go for it. He wanted to go for the spot and last second couldn't. That's that's what happened. That's why the driver did that. So this is a very uh, bad driver. Um, but this is a, one of those situations where you are constantly rotating and moving and looking at your mirror. So look a mirror, look mirror, head check, head check, straight. You know, just, you're constantly getting a, a sense of your space time continuum no the spatial awareness of everything so that's why that's very important um but i can see why he did that he wants to go for that he probably didn't see the motorcyclist quite honest inattentional blindness could have played a role in it. he saw him last second and decided to stay in his lane because he's going to hit him um he's freaking riding an orange bike how could you not be seen orange is like construction it just happens. Inattentional blindness. Um, I talked about that in the last video, but people just cannot see you because their brain won't let it, let it. That happens. We're gonna lightning round these. All right, vehicle in your way, vehicle in your way. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. All right, so that's typical, that can happen. So before you try to gun it, um, you just went from a position of not being able to see, uh, this vehicle's not able to see you, to now they can see you when you get to this outside edge, but you are passing. This vehicle can't tell it's you're passing. He just got out of the intersection himself. 
now that he got out of the intersection, decided to change lanes. That is what you're supposed to do anyways. You're supposed to wait until you're out of the intersection to change lanes. This motorcyclist changed lanes during uh, the intersection, and it's uh, he's Rex Sam's angriest biker, so I'm assuming he probably gets himself in a lot of these situations. Same same person. Okay. So once again, judgment of speed. Vehicles can't do that very well. We also got little cabezas right here. Lane filtering in California. He's, this guy's riding the line either to be be mean. No, 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 no. Get out of there. Okay. We're going back to that one. I think that's another replay of a different video. Um, this this vehicle was riding the line whether they, they were doing it intentionally or not. I don't know. It's not going to bother me none. I'm already on a motorcycle that's going to uh, lane filter through all this traffic. So if I'm in a rush, it's my own fault that I'm in a rush. And then if I if I arrive late to my destination, then I make uh, not an excuse, but I make a reason why. You know, it's And I'll just be like, I woke up late. I'm so sorry. Please, please accept my apology. That's it. Uh, no excuses, guys. Uh, but right here, when he's moving up forward, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna annoy you. Then wait for this person to go back, which is gonna happen right here. Okay. Maybe go a different route. <laughs> Maybe get back in this lane, or just kind of wait until there's a massive opening before passing this person. This person could be having a bad day, or it could be having something, and you're now gonna instigate uh, road rage. Now you got to deal with that. Same person. I don't think we've seen this one before. Same person. Yeah, you're not supposed to uh, exit the HOV lane. It's a double yellow. You're not supposed to do that in that spot. You're only supposed to do it uh, when, you, when you're when you supposed to. But nobody does that. And I think uh, as somebody in California or has driven in California, I've seen it all the time, people just crossing over, crossing over, crossing over when they're not supposed to. So I'm assuming it's more like, a, like this is what happens. And if you're a motorcyclist and you've already witnessed a couple dozen of these, then it needs to start becoming the norm. Yes, it's not supposed to. But it's the norm, and this is a hazard now that I have to deal with. Don't know what this guy is deciding to do. Yeah. I don't know what that was all about, but I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching these videos with me. What we do is we actually go over a lot of the stuff during the live stream. So if you'd like to be a part of the live streams, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell button. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, click that join button. And uh, yeah, this video is going to get demonetized. It's going to get demonetized. It's going to be a big hassle and it's pretty frustrating, but I want you guys to be able to see these close calls. Uh, that way you know what to look out for and you have some of the tips that I'm able to bring but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there to uh, to bring some really good tips so if you know those people bring them to this channel or, or bring me to them because I would love to learn um, but the main thing is that this is what I've learned while riding this is what I've learned while driving ambulances for for a very long time so with that said I hope you guys ride safe be safe and I'll be seeing you around